Hi there, Great Gems. This is the last of the videos I am making on November Paper 1 um, questions. And this uh, video clip discusses aspects around electric circuits. Question 6.1. A group of physics learners set up the circuit below to investigate the relationship between current and potential difference across the ends of a conductor. When you read this, you uh, need to recall Ohm's law. Because Ohm's law gives the relationship between um, potential difference and current or current and potential difference. And we know that the potential difference is directly proportional to the current in the conductor. When the temperature is kept constant. They closed the switch and recorded the ammeter and voltmeter readings. They repeated the experiment three times. Each time, they increased the number of cells in the circuit. Increasing the number of cells would increase the potential energy available in the circuit. And because the current is directly proportional to the potential difference, that is why adding cells will increase the current. They then read and record the ammeter and voltmeter readings. We see in the circuit that we've got the battery, we've got a switch, we've got an ammeter, we've got a resistor, and we've got the voltmeter parallel to the resistor. Define a resistor. A resistor is a conductor that makes it more difficult for charge to move through the circuit. So that is the definition of a resistor. 6.1.2, write down a hypothesis for this investigation. Now, a hypothesis has got to do with the variables that is mentioned in the investigation. So they want the relationship between the current and the potential difference across the ends of the resistor. So your, your hypothesis must be what you expect it to be. Now, what we know from studying Ohm's law is that the current through a resistor is directly proportional to the potential difference across its ends. But you could write anything in connection with the relationship as long as you mention current and potential difference. 613, identify the following variables. The controlled variable. A controlled variable would be like keeping the temperature constant. Those are the things that are kept the same. You could also dare to say that the EMF of the, um, the cells or the type of cells, but I wouldn't go to that. Or the size of the cell. I think the examiner would like you to mention the temperature. And then a second one could be the resistance of the resistor. I would prefer temperature or resistance of the resistor. The dependent variable would be the current. Because you, by adding, the, adding cells into the circuit, you're increasing the potential difference. The current depends on the potential difference. The potential difference is the independent variable. A graph of their results is shown below. 
So it is a graph of current against potential difference. And from the graph, you can also observe that the current being on the y-axis makes it the, the dependent variable and the potential difference on the x-axis makes it the um, independent variable. Six, one, four. Which quantity is represented by the gradient of the graph? Now, to answer this question, we need to note that it's a linear graph. So they want to know what the gradient is. So the gradient would be the change in the current divided by the change in the potential difference. That's how we would calculate the gradient mathematically. Combine this with Ohm's law, which says that the potential difference is directly proportional to the current and we get V equals R I R or R I. This is a linear equation with the y-intercept zero. So if I write the equation like this, V is on my y-axis and I is on the x-axis and the uh, resistance would be the gradient of the straight line. But in this case, we have uh, a delta y over delta v gradient. So if I take this equation and I write it as i divided by v, what will we have? We will have 1 over r because r is v over i according to Ohm's law. If R is V over I, then I over V is 1 over R. So this quantity represented by the gradient of the graph is the inverse of the resistance. of the resistor. Name and state the physical law that was investigated. It is Ohm's law. And potential difference across the ends of a conductor is directly proportional to current through the conductor if temperature is kept constant. Once again, anytime you need to pause the video if you need to take your uh, notes. Question 6.2 works through an electric circuit problem. The battery in the circuit diagram below has negligible internal resistance. The resistance of resistor R, this resistor is unknown. This resistor is connected in series. When the switch is closed, this is a switch, and when it is closed, the voltmeter reads 15 volts. This voltmeter is connected across the battery and the ammeter A1 reads one ampere. Define electric current strength. 
it is the rate of flow of charge. There is an equation on the data sheet that helps us to remember this. I equals Q over delta T. Next question, 622, determine the reading on the ammeter. Now, the 12 ohm resistor and the two 6 ohm resistors, they act as a 12 ohm resistor. This, these two 6 ohm resistors are in series, but they are connected parallel to this 12 ohm resistor. So these two 6 ohm resistors have a resistance combined resistance of 12 ohm and that's connected parallel to that 12 ohm resistor. So the current that flows through this 12 ohm resistor is one ampere. The current that will flow through these two resistors will be exactly the same size as that reading on A1 because the resistance here is identical to the resistance there. We've got parallel connection resistors, they split the current in half. So if this 12 ohm resistor takes one ohm, those two resistors will take one ohm. So the reading on the total current will be double one, which is two ampere. Okay. Last question, calculate the resistance of resistor R, 6.2.3. So just to say, this reads two amperes because one ampere goes through there and one ampere comes through here because these two resistors acts as a 12 ohm resistor. Then the current that flows through R is two, uh, two amperes. The trick now to calculate resistance, I need potential difference and I need current. I've got the current, it's the total current. But the 15 volts energy supplied here. is divided. That total voltage there is divided. Part of it will be used in the parallel part of the uh, circuit, and another part will be the voltage across R. The only way I see to solve this problem is that we need to get the parallel resistance. So the parallel resistance is the 1 over 12 ohms plus the 1 over 6 plus 6 ohms, which is 12 ohms. So it is 2, it's 2 over 12. Inverse of 2 over 12 will be 6 ohms. You see, 12 ohms and 12 ohms, half of it will be 6 ohms. So the voltage across the parallel part of the circuit will be equal to the current through that parallel part, which is the total current, times the resistance of the parallel circuit. So it is 2 times 6 ohms which is 12 volts. So the 15 volts that is supplied here, 12 volts is used by the parallel part of the circuit. So what is the voltage 
across R. The voltage across R would be 15 minus 12. So VR is 3 volts. So we've got VR uh, is 3 volts. And we've got total current that flows through that circuit, through that resistor, is 2 ampere. So it's 1.5 ohms is the total is the resistance of resistor R. Right, I hope these discussions would help you to develop your understanding of the physical science concepts. Thank you very much. This brings us to the end of paper one.